Today I'll show you how I put together these lava cracks for my modular Warcry terrain board. Starting off with a piece of XPS foam, I'm just going to use a sharpie and draw out the rough area of where I want the lava to kind of be laid out. Then I'm going to use some sheets of cork and just tearing a few strips off. I'm just going to tear a few pieces here to make the process a little bit simpler. I'm going to then take a piece and start tearing them into smaller manageable pieces. Now the trick to this is you want to start with a very very thin strip and then each layer that you build on top to make the uh, border for the lava flow you go with slightly larger strips. So the nice thing about this cork is using hot glue you can start to glue down a section and then as long as you're not too rough with it uh, you can just kind of mold it and bend it a little bit to kind of get a curved edge even if it didn't have one to begin with. So it's really nice and easy to work with it just takes a really long amount of time. Uh, for the entire build process the longest part was tearing and gluing down all of the cork sections. Now in some cases I'm just taking pieces as they are, in other cases I'm uh, starting to tear the cork in very specific patterns to kind of fit areas that I want the edge and border to be. Uh, but there's really no rhyme or reason to it, it's just kind of tear in place as needed. Now I'm going to be doing multiple layers of this, um, I'm aiming for between uh, three and five layers. Some areas might be a little bit more layered and other areas might not be. Uh, the important thing is to just kind of make it look like it's a little bit deeper, a little bit more uh, depth than just, you know, one layer of cork would provide. Now once we smooth down the edges and just kind of blend everything together, all of these layers are going to create a very, very strong illusion of a deep lava crag. Now as I get further towards the end of uh, the number of layers that I want, I'm going to start using larger and larger pieces of cork to kind of start blending everything together. And this will also simplify the uh, blending process with any kind of filler, uh, whether it's tile grout, paper mache, or uh, sculpt a mold. It doesn't really matter what you use, but using larger pieces of cork will make that whole process a little bit simpler. And this should about do it for all the layers that I want. So now we're going to create the actual lava flow. And I'm just doing a very, very thin and light layer of hot glue inside of these little crag pools. And the trick to this is don't hold the nozzle still. Just kind of constantly be moving it around while extruding some hot glue. And it'll give this nice little swirling uh, molten effect. Now using some tile grout, I am uh, just kind of blending and smoothing everything together. Uh, I'm going right up to the edge in a lot of places on the top layer of the uh, lip of the lava pools, but I am mostly trying to uh, blend any of the cork lines together so that you don't really see it uh, stand out on the rest of the board. Now because I'm using a relatively thin layer of grout, this won't take super long to dry, maybe an hour or so, but I'm going to leave it to fully harden before I move on to the next step. 
Now I'm going to add the ground texture, which requires a fairly decent amount of glue. I'm using Mod Podge, and this is just going to go on a full coating of the entire area where the dried grout is. Now I'm being very liberal with the amount of glue that I'm using because I want a very, very strong adhesion uh, once it dries and holds all the sand down. All right, once the glue is applied, I just coat the whole thing in a healthy layer of sand and leave that to dry. Uh, that took about a half hour to fully dry and make sure that nothing's going to fall off. Uh, so I'm going to uh, seal that with some watered down Mod Podge to make sure it doesn't break loose. And once that's been dried, I'm going to do a, a surface layer coating of burnt umber over all of the sand. Now because this is uh, towards the lava pool, you can absolutely do some uh, darker colors, but I'm doing the just general burnt umber coloration to match the rest of the terrain tiles that I've put together so far. And then once that's done, we do our usual treatment of a light dry brushing of Artist Loft Gray. Follow that up with a dry brushing of neutral gray. And then finally, the one to one mix of parchment and raw sienna. Now, once this is done, if you don't want to do grass, this would be perfectly uh, acceptable as just kind of an empty field with some lava. Now we are going to fill in all of the lava and all of the uh, exposed cork with some uh, raw umber. This is going to give a nice burnt and scorched look. And I'm also uh, stippling around the edges uh, next to the pool uh, just to kind of create the illusion of burnt and scorched ground. Once that's fully dried, I'm going to put two coats of Artist Loft Orange uh, inside only on the hot glue for the magma. Looking at some images of lava flows on uh, Google, I found a fairly similar pattern. It's usually a very deep uh, yellow or orange followed by uh, brighter yellow and then uh, red and then very, very uh, dark red at the top. So that's what we're gonna try and simulate. So now I'm going to just kind of stipple on some uh, brilliant orange and this is gonna go kind of in the center of all of the flows. And then using some orange, I'm going to do a kind of uh, dry brush of all of the edges of the lava crags. Now to do this, what I'm uh, doing is starting at the lava and then pulling away towards the lip of the crater. And that gives a nice kind of glowing light effect uh, without being too heavy handed or uh, too extreme. Next, I'm going to do a fairly light brushing of uh, some deep red over all of the lava. Now because of the uh, raised areas that the hot glue created, this is going to leave us with the orange and yellows underneath. And then I'm going to do some vermilion, just kind of a light edge highlight, almost dry brush of all of the uh, cork on the edges of the craters. This will help complete the lighting effect that we're going for with the lava. Now I'm going to add some grass flock and I'll be the first to admit I did way more glue than I needed to for this and ended up with way more grass than I wanted to but I'm going to show you a technique that I randomly discovered that will help uh, kind of tone down how much grass there is. Once it's had a few minutes to dry I tap off the extra 
And then I'm just gonna let that dry for a little bit longer. Uh, but first I'm going to add a couple of touches of grass kind of on these little raised areas in the center because I'm gonna try something to kind of create a uh, burnt effect or burnt look on some of the grass areas. Alright, now I've let that dry for a while and I'm just going to take a uh, very short dry brush brush that I've got and I'm just going to brush away any loose pieces of grass and try and uh, knock away some of the grass that's on the patches just to kind of show through some of the uh, stones and sand underneath. Once that's done, I'm going to create a burn look by uh, just kind of, again, starting from the lava and working towards the center of the grass tufts. Use some raw umber to kind of make it look like the ground has been scorched and the grass has started to burn. This will also help blend some of the coloration and make it look like the uh, lava is continuing to spread and scorch and burn the earth around it. Alright, and here we are with the finished piece. I am super happy with how this turned out. I have never made lava before, but I am super excited to do this on a larger board uh, sometime in the future. So please everyone hit that like button, subscribe for future content, comment in the comment section, and we will see everyone next episode.